Did Samsung just beat Apple at the display game? Well, today we will find out because we are comparing the brand new M8 to Apple Studio Display. We're gonna cover everything from the build quality, the display quality, the speakers, microphone and webcam, extra features, value, and much more. Let's go ahead and open up this bad boy. And I have to say that when I saw the release of this monitor, I was genuinely very excited. Vadim can vouch for that just because of the price point and all the features that it has and that you can use it not only as a smart TV, but other features to make it more like a computer at that low price point. Now, of course, the packaging does not match up to Apple Studio Display, which is overkill, but super, super nice. But let's go ahead and see what we get inside. I gotta say that I definitely like this herringbone pattern. It's a lot better than just flat plastic, like on my LG Ultrafine that shows fingerprints, and this one doesn't. Now, weight, not too heavy, but the panel is quite large. Let's go ahead and grab our stand here. This reminds me of the Pro Display XDR stand, but a lot lighter and not a thousand dollars. And check this out. It is height adjustable without having to spend another 400 bucks, which is nice. Now, even though this is plastic, it actually has a good amount of weight to it because of the mechanism inside. And the base is actually completely metal for extra stability. Now, we do have to put this together. And we do have one screw that we have to tighten down. Now I did actually buy one of these right at launch, but then Samsung reached out and they wanted to get us one earlier. And I was like, of course, I want to cover it and I want to replace my monitor at home with one of these. So this is a sample from them. Let's go ahead and pop in the stand. You do not need a screw or anything. Bam, it is popped in and we are all set up. All right guys, look at this beast right here. 32 inches compared to 27. That's a big difference. And I've gotta say that I am very impressed with this stand. For a built-in stand for a fairly inexpensive monitor, with compared to the features, it is actually really nice. Way better than the $1,300 LG 5K. That thing is terrible and wobbles like crazy. Now, as I mentioned, the Samsung is height adjustable out of the box. You can lower it or you can go all the way up this high. So that is nice without having to spend the extra $400. And to me, uh, the studio display is about one to two inches too short, but not enough to get me to spend that money. Now, Apple tries to get around this by offering a ton of tilt adjustments stability to aim it up at your face. The M8 can't go as far back as you guys could see because then it would be hitting that stand. Neither of these can go vertical, but the M8 does allow you to adjust the level, but personally, I'd rather have it be static and more solid. Now, as far as build quality, Samsung is better than I expected, but it does not even come close to Apple's all aluminum design. Feels way more premium, way more solid. The whole stand is one piece. Very, very sturdy. It looks gorgeous. And the whole front is all glass instead of being plastic for the display. Now, as far as connectivity, the studio display uses Thunderbolt 4, and then it also gives you 96 watts of charging plus three USB ports that run at full 10 gigabit per second speeds, which is really nice. Now, the M8 uses USB Type-C, and it only gives you 65 watts of power, which is enough for most, but it won't really max out your laptop if you have a 16 inch. And then you get a five gigabit per second USB-C port, and then you also get a mini HDMI. Now, you do get both cables and the mini cable has a standard HDMI on the other end. And I do like how all the ports are hidden behind here. That way you don't see anything coming out from the side and then going back through your little cutout. So it makes it a lot cleaner. Now the M8 is quite a bit thinner than Apple Studio Display, but that is because it has an external power brick. This massive two stage system that is just so bulky. Now, of course, it's gonna sit on your floor, probably next to the outlet, but Apple's display has all of that built in. And lastly, before we turn these on, the Samsung also comes with this really small remote that charges with USB Type-C that gives you your Netflix, Disney, Prime, smart options, all of that, because this is technically a TV as well. And this is the coolest part. You get this webcam that magnetically attaches to the back of the monitor. Bam, it is attached and you have a webcam. And if you don't need it, you take it off. 
Now with that, it also has this little metal magnetic cover. So if you want to keep it attached, but you want privacy, literally just pops on to block the webcam or you can remove it, pop it on the back so you don't lose that cover. I wish Apple did something like this because this is what allows the M8 to have such thin bezels all around while still having a 1080p webcam. It is just such a cool little feature. But of course, if Apple did that, they would charge you probably a couple hundred bucks for the webcam separately. Now let's go ahead and spin these around and turn them on and start comparing the speakers, the webcams, and the display quality. The setup was pretty easy on the Samsung. You just use your smartphone to get everything ready. And now we have it set up here and it's pretty much looking just like a TV. You have different apps that you can download. You have free TV streaming. Now we can go ahead and switch over to Workspace and this is really, really cool. You can actually connect to a Windows PC to a Mac or Samsung DeX even wirelessly and be able to use those devices on this display even if they're not in the same room. You can also have smart apps like Microsoft 365 services. Uh, you can connect a keyboard mouse either wired or by Bluetooth. So this is something that I would love in the studio display. Now let's just go ahead and switch over to a monitor. Now I was a bit worried how it would connect to our Mac and if I'd have to get a Windows PC, but we're having no issues. It shows up and it's actually labeled as a Samsung in our display settings. The size is accurate. And then if we go to the sound settings, the speakers also show up properly through the display port. And not only that, the detachable webcam also shows up perfectly without having to install anything. And that is awesome. Now, as you guys could see, the bezels are extremely slim and the display is much larger. Now we're gonna cover all of the display differences in just a sec, but first let's compare those speakers and the webcam. <laughs> All right guys, wow, you heard it for yourselves. Now the Samsung, it does get loud. It actually probably gets a little louder than the studio display, but the quality of the sound and the depth and the bass and the clarity, it is not there. Now we have four speakers here. They are rear facing, which means that it's not bouncing off of anything in this scenario where the Mac is bouncing off the table. But even if you added that, you're not gonna get any of that richness in that base. So it is just no competition. And I think if you are an adult, and you're gonna be watching movies on this display, airplaying, uh, you are gonna need to add at least a subwoofer or some other speakers or a soundbar or something to actually make it a good TV. Now I wanted to make sure that it's not just the connection from the iMac, so I actually airplayed to it, which you can do, it's super sweet, but the sound quality stayed the same, and that is with the amplified setting inside of the settings, which does make it sound better than the standard. Now, as far as webcams and microphones, a lot of people have been very critical about the webcam that's in the studio display. It is 1080p, but as you guys can see, there's a lot of noise. It's not very contrast, it's more flat. Now, it is an ultra-wide camera that is currently being cropped in order to give you this normal view, but then if you're using software that supports it for conferencing, it will automatically adjust, and that is why the quality doesn't look that good when it is a 1080p. And here is the webcam and the microphone quality of Samsung's M8. It's also a 1080p camera, but it looks quite large on there. And I can see that there is very little noise and there's a ton of contrast, honestly, too much. Now this could also crop in and zoom out, but I don't really know what it's doing currently because I'm not connected to Zoom or another application that supports it. But you guys take a look at this side by side right here and let me know which one looks better to you and also comment which one sounded better in terms of microphone. Now I know you guys heard that weird, awful, staticky ticking sound with the m 8 microphone. That is actually being picked up by it. And I looked up at somebody else's review, the audio recording, and they also had that issue. Hopefully that is something that is not a hardware issue, but just software that needs to be fixed. Now getting into display quality, the first thing I wanna talk about is just that size difference in scaling. The 32 inch 4K display is being ran natively and it actually is 
big enough that if you have decent eyes, you can use it without any scaling for the sharpest results and you actually get a lot of screen real estate. Whereas the studio display, it uses two times scaling perfectly for 5K from 1440p. Now, as far as sharpness, there is no comparison. The studio display has 218 PPI, so text looks nice and crisp, sharp. Uh, this is what I've been used to the last six years since the LG 5K came out and even the iMac before that. Now with the M8, you have a 4K display up to 32 inches. That's a large screen. So when you look at it, if you're used to a nice high, high resolution display, higher than 4K, it does look soft. Now, if you're somebody that comes from a 1080p screen, let's say a 24 inch, that is only 92 PPI. This thing is 140. So not only we get a larger screen, it, it will actually get sharper as well. So overall, it's not bad. It does work well, but it's not the luxury detail and sharpness of an iMac or you know a studio display. Now, as far as display brightness, it's actually not as big of a deal as I expected. We have 600 nits compared to 400, and if you're straight on, both are plenty bright, but where the Samsung falls apart is if you're viewing off axis. Uh, you have a lot of color shift, you'll have a lot of brightness shift, contrast loss, and that is because it is actually a VA panel, not an IPS panel. With that, there's also some uniformity issues where the corners are darker, almost like a vignette filter on a photo, whereas the studio display doesn't have that issue at all. Now on the flip side, the contrast when you're sitting straight on looks amazing because of that V8 panel. The studio display already has the best LCD display that Apple has put out, but this panel has really nice contrast. The brightness is bright enough for the content it pops. Uh, and as far as reflectivity, you do get a little bit more reflections, but it's a matte display, so it's dispersed compared to Apple, which has a full glass panel with really nice coatings. So you do get extra sharpness and detail on um, the studio display, but the Samsung actually performs better than we expected. Now, as far as color accuracy, the M8 does actually output 99% sRGB. So if you wanna use it for photo editing, video editing, you can. You just wanna make sure that you get a color calibrator. Now, the studio display is calibrated out of the box, and it can actually do 100% of DCI-P3. So it's excellent for people working with video. If you care about color accuracy, it's gonna do a killer job, definitely a better job. Now, overall, we've done all these comparisons. These are completely different price ranges. We have 700 bucks with a whole smart TV and remote PC access and the webcam, all of that compared to 1600 you know, more than twice the price. So it really comes down to what you're looking for. If you want the best of the best displays where you care about luxury, you care about the materials, you care about having that extra brightness and sharpness, I mean, this new studio display is amazing. While the M8, the thing that stands out to me is that one, it looks good, better than most uh, Windows monitors that are created for Windows systems. It works with Macs perfectly, has AirPlay, you can stream, you can mirror, you can remote access, you can go ahead and open up any of these apps. Um, it is just very, very versatile. You can play, run Alexa on there, so you don't need an Echo in your room. If you want something to put in your room that you can not only use as a monitor, but you can just sit from your bed or from a couch uh, and be able to watch movies, uh, you wanna be able to just use it as an all-around TV display plus more, it is a killer system for that price of 700 bucks. Just don't expect you know, really good sharp details from it like the 5K uh, or super high quality as far as the build. If you get kind of what you pay for and for that 700 bucks it offers a ton of value. Personally, we're gonna set this up at home for my kids and I'll continue using my 6K XDR for daily use. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Do you like this offering from Samsung? Do you guys like the look? Click above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This is Max and I'll see you in the next video.